Dr. Perry Carpenter. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join me on today's video. On today's video I want to share with you some important information that will impact your QME practice uh, for many years to come at least until the next legislative change. <laughs> and I want to share with you some information today regarding 2012 changes to the QME panel process as a result of the passage of Senate Bill 863. And many doctors are unaware of the specific changes that took place in the QME panel process and are still operating under uh, old labor codes and old ideas. And so I want to clear up some of those uh, changes for you so that you're up to speed on number one, the QME panel process. And then number two, once we uh, review the QME panel process, I want to leapfrog into a discussion about a phenomenon that seems to be taking place with increasing frequency uh, and is a source of increasing frustration for many doctors. And that is the increasing frequency of replacement panel requests. QME replacement panel requests. So uh, let me give you a little background on this. Uh, I'm getting calls from doctors uh, who are frustrated because they are getting QME appointments and they're getting those appointments set up and they're following the proper procedure for uh, setting the appointment through the appointment notification form and all of that administrative work only to find out that their QME appointment is being denied or not authorized or outright rejected uh, by one or more of the parties as one or more of the parties request a replacement panel typically in a different specialty of evaluator and this seems to be happening with increasing frequency for chiropractors and pain management physicians these are the calls uh, that I'm receiving so uh, I want to talk about uh, how this happens uh, and the sequence of events that lead to replacement panels. And then I want to give you some ideas as to what you can do uh, if your panels are being uh, denied, not authorized, or outright rejected. Because uh, there is a certain number, a uh, certain percentage of these appointments uh, that you may be able to salvage. And it begins with a knowledge of the QME replacement panel, the QME panel process, I mean, and then the replacement panel process as well. There's a couple points in there in which you can uh, intervene. So I want to share those uh, ideas with you. So let's begin by first uh, getting clear and on the same page as to the current labor codes that govern the QME panel process. And I'll highlight some of the changes as a result of Senate Bill uh, 863. So uh, with regards to the QME panel process, there's three labor codes that govern the QME panel process. And let's go over those. So first of all, we have labor code 4060, we have labor code 4061, and we have labor code 4062. Now each one of these codes deal with a different type of dispute uh, that may be uh, uh, ongoing that may be a part of the uh, workers' compensation claim. So, for example, Labor Code 4060, that's the labor code that we refer to when we have a dispute over the compensability
compensability of an injury. So if you're getting QME evaluations related to 40, 60 disputes, those evaluations are going to occur reasonably proximate, reasonably proximate to the date of injury. Those are going to be evaluations that you see very close to the date of injury because those are evaluations designed to resolve disputes or the compensability of the claim. So let me give you an example of that. Let's say an injured worker comes to his employer on a Monday morning and says that uh, three days prior on Friday when he was working in the warehouse uh, alone, uh, he was unloading boxes and he suffered uh, a strain to his back and he didn't say anything about it to anyone at the time because uh, he didn't really think much of it and he thought it would go away. But here we are on Monday morning and uh, injured worker says, I'm still having pain. I want to file a claim for workers' compensation benefits and I want medical treatment. Okay, so that's uh, the scenario and I'm just making this up as an example. So the employer, uh, when confronted with an unwitnessed incident that was unreported three days earlier, has every right to object uh, to this as an industrial injury. And the employer can declare a dispute over the compensability, meaning the presence or absence of an industrial injury, and can uh, obtain a QME panel to resolve the compensability issue. For compensability issues, we refer to the QME panel process described in Labor Code 4060. Now, for disputes over permanent impairment and future medical care, we refer to the process of obtaining a QME panel as is described in Labor Code 4061. So let's say, for example, uh, we have the same injured worker. He came in on Monday morning. He had an evaluation. Uh, the evaluating physician opined for an industrial injury and a workers' compensation claim is established. And this person goes through uh, treatment for a period of time and then uh, after, let's say, six months, the primary treating physician tells the injured worker that they're now permanent and stationary, uh, they're well, they have no permanent impairment, and they're done with treatment, there's no more treatment needed now or into the future and the injured worker disputes this determination, the determination of the primary treating physician. The injured worker may think, well, I do have permanent impairment. I still have pain. There's still things I can't do. I still have limitations. The injured worker could dispute the findings of the primary treating physician. For those types of disputes over permanent impairment, and, and or future medical care, we refer to the procedure for obtaining a QME panel as it's described in Labor Code 4061. Now, for all other disputes, all other disputes, we refer to the process of obtaining a QME panel as it's described in Labor Code 4062. So what could be some of the other disputes? What could be some of the other issues? How about work restrictions? Uh, primary treating physician says that uh, the employee can go back to full unrestricted duty. The injured worker could uh, dispute that. They could dispute the fact that they indeed need some uh, either temporary or permanent work modifications in order to be able to continue working. What else? Uh, what other types of determinations? The primary treating physician could say that the uh, injured worker is permanent and stationary and the injured worker could believe that no I'm not. I need more treatment. I need a, I need a surgical consult. I need more therapy. Uh, I need uh, more time off. I need more temporary disability. Any of these other disputes are resolved according to the procedure described in Labor Code 4062. Okay, now the plot gets even thicker 
because the pathway to a QME panel can differ based upon whether or not the injured worker is a represented injured worker versus an unrepresented injured worker. Now, for the represented injured worker, we refer to the process as it's described in Section 2 of Labor Code 4062. For the unrepresented injured worker, we refer to the process as it's described in Section 1 of code, Labor Code 4062. So this is 4062.1, this is 4062.2. For the represented injured workers, they apply for a QME panel through the use of QME Form 106. For the unrepresented injured worker, they apply for a QME panel through the use of Form 105. And we're going to go to the computer in just a couple moments and I'll pull up these forms and we're going to go over them and I'm going to show you a couple of key points and a key a few data points uh, about these forms that you may not have otherwise known. And then we're going to transition into a discussion about QME form 31.5, which is the application form for a QME replacement panel. QME replacement panel. Now, with regards to the procedures involved in obtaining a QME panel in each of these situations, uh, there's a couple of key points that you need to know. First of all, for the unrepresented injured worker, for the unrepresented injured worker, you have the unrepresented injured worker and you have the claims administrator who, between the two of them, have a dispute. Now, there could be a singular dispute where simply the injured worker has a dispute with the findings of the uh, primary treating physician, or you could have the claims administrator that has a dispute with the findings of the primary treating physician, or both of those together, they could have either the same dispute, different disputes, simultaneous disputes. There's several different possibilities here. Singular dispute from each of the parties, or both of the parties having uh, simultaneous disputes. Now it's important that you remember that the person declaring the dispute is the person holding the legal right to the QME panel. So let me illustrate that. Let's say the injured worker uh, receives the final report from the primary treating physician and the injured worker reads the report and says, uh, I disagree with his determination. I dispute these findings. The injured worker in that scenario holds the legal right to the QME panel. This is important. What's the opposite of that? The opposite of that is the claims administrator reads the report uh, and disagrees with the findings of the primary treating physician. Let's say the primary treating physician uh, declared the injured worker to have 50% permanent impairment uh, with a need for daily acupuncture and massage uh, for the rest of their life. <laughs> I'm making this up. But the claims administrator is going to look at that report and they're going to go, uh, I disagree with these findings. I want to have a QME resolve this issue. In that scenario, the claims administrator is the party holding the legal right to the QME panel. Now, regardless of which of those two parties holds the legal right to the QME panel, the injured worker always has the first opportunity to order the panel. So even when the claims administrator is the party declaring the dispute, the claims administrator declares the dispute and tells the injured worker to order a QME panel. This is important because it's always the injured worker who has the opportunity to first select the specialty of physician to perform the evaluation. And this will become important when we talk about the QME replacement panel 
requests. Okay? So that's one thing I wanted to establish. Now, the second thing I want to establish involves the represented injured worker. When there's a dispute involving a represented injured worker, those are resolved according to Labor Code 4062.2. Now, in this situation, the scenario is a little bit different. We have more parties. We have the injured worker and the injured worker's attorney. We have the claims administrator and possibly a defense attorney. Now, in this scenario, when there's a dispute, either party can order a QME panel. Either party can order a QME panel. These parties can select different specialties to be the evaluating physicians. Okay? So that's one point. We can have conflicting requests, conflicting specialty requests. Now, the parties always have the option of agreeing on an agreed medical evaluator to perform the evaluation. And this is a new change uh, related to the passage of Senate Bill 863. Before the passage of 863, it was required, required, <laughs> that the parties attempt to agree on one evaluator to be the agreed medical evaluator. In other words, the parties had to demonstrate to the administrative director prior to requesting a QME panel, they had to be able to demonstrate that indeed they tried to get together and they tried to agree on some doctor uh, to perform the evaluation. So that conversation might go sort of as follows. Hi, this is Attorney Smith. Is Attorney Jones available? Yes, hi, this is Attorney Jones. Hi, this is Attorney Smith. We have Betty uh, Lou, uh, injured worker who has a dispute, and I'm calling to find out if you would be willing uh, to agree to have Dr. Williams be the agreed medical evaluator on this case. Dr. Williams, no way! I don't want to have Dr. Williams. He's the worst. And the parties cannot agree. They send this documentation to the administrative director, and the administrative director then issues a three-doctor panel, a QME panel. That was the old procedure before the passage of Senate Bill 863. Now, with the passage of Senate Bill 863, the parties are not required, they're not required to try and agree on an agreed medical evaluator. They can always agree to, to use an agreed medical evaluator at any point, but it's not required like it used to be. Okay? So that's one change. Now, another change involves the fact that under the old system, before the passage of Senate Bill 863, we used to have a new designation of evaluator that we referred to as the Agreed Panel QME, the AP QME. And the AP QME was a doctor whose name showed up on the QME panel for whom the two parties then agreed to use to become the evaluator. So let me back up and review that. So first the parties had to try to agree on an agreed medical evaluator. If they were not able to agree on an agreed medical evaluator, then they requested a QME panel from the administrative director. The administrative director would issue the panel with three doctors' names on the panel the parties would then look at those three names and then be required, they were required to come together to try to agree on one of those three doctors to be the evaluator. So we'd have Dr. Smith, Dr. Jones, and Dr. Williams. And the conversation would go as follows. Uh, uh, hi, hi, I see we have Dr. Smith, Dr. Jones, and Dr. Williams on the panel. Would you agree uh, that we could use Dr. Williams? Uh, Dr. Williams, Dr. Williams. Yeah, I don't have any objection to Dr. Williams. I've heard good things about Dr. Williams. Sure, let's go ahead and use Dr. Williams. And the two parties agreed to use Dr. Williams. In this case, Dr. Williams became known as the Agreed Panel Qualified Medical Evaluator. AP Q 
APQME. And the APQME uh, was an important uh, distinction because the APQME uh, had the same uh, benefits as being the agreed medical evaluator. They could bill at a higher rate, another 25%, and they could designate themselves as the APQME for subsequent reevaluations and supplemental reports, and it was an important designation. Well, with the passage of Senate Bill 863, uh, the APQME has been done away with. There is no more APQME. So now, what happens is, uh, the parties get the panel, with three doctors' uh, names on the panel, and then each party strikes one name off the panel. So the, the doc, uh, attorney Jones strikes a doctor, Attorney Smith strikes a doctor. The last man standing on the panel gets the evaluation. That's known as the panel QME. The panel QME. <laughs> now, I get calls from many doctors who are somewhat confused about this. And uh, many doctors, I'm surprised, uh, seem to think or are under the opinion that the last man standing on the QME panel is the agreed panel QME. <laughs> and they ask me, uh, Dr. Carpenter, aren't I the agreed panel QME if I'm the last man standing? If each party struck a doctor and I'm the last man standing, I'm the agreed panel QME, aren't I? <laughs> and the answer to that is no. <laughs> You're not the agreed panel QME uh, for at least two reasons. Number one, uh, nobody agreed to use you. <laughs> Just because you're the last man standing, that's not an agreement to use you. You're the default doctor. So neither one of them agreed to you. In fact, they struck one guy that they, that they knew they didn't want to use, they struck another guy that they knew they didn't want to use, and you're like the last guy there, neither party agreed to use you. So there's no agreement there. And the second reason that you're not the APQME is because the APQME designation uh, no longer exists. The APQME no longer exists. The parties do not have to attempt to agree to use one of the doctors on the three doctor panel. So. That's an important distinction as well. Okay? So, we now know the process involved with uh, the request for a QME panel. They go through Form 105 for the unrepresented injured worker, Form 106 for the represented injured worker, and the party holding the legal right to the panel holds the first opportunity to request the specialty of the panel. So let's now go to the computer and go through Forms 105, Form 106, and then we'll relate those to Form 35.1, which is the form that's used for the replacement panel requests. And then I'll give you some uh, practical suggestions about what you can do if you find yourself in a situation where you get a QME appointment but that appointment is subsequently uh, denied or uh, rejected by one or more of the parties. Okay, so we'll pick right up now uh, with Forms 105 and 106. those to the QME replacement request panel form, which is QME form 31.5. So here we are on the uh, DWC website. We're at the forms page. 
you can find all the forms listed at this link over here on, at the right. And I've already clicked the link, so let's just scroll down to the forms. They're pretty close to the bottom. And here's all the QME and AME uh, forms. So let's scroll right down to Form 105, the Request for QME Panel under Labor Code Section 4062.1. This relates to unrepresented injured workers. Okay, so let's bring up this form. And here it is. And let's just go through some of the text of this form uh, so that we know uh, what our injured workers are filling out when they request a QME panel. It says each form shall be accompanied by, number one, an objection to a medical determination made by a treating physician, comma, or number two, a notice that there is a need for an examination to determine compensability and that would be under Labor Code Section 4060. Now, in those cases where there's a dispute over compensability, each employer or claims administrator who submits this form to request a QME panel must attach a copy of the correspondence and required notices sent to the injured employee with the panel request form. And these correspondences and required notices those are clearly described under Labor Code 40, 4060, and we won't go into those uh, here now. So this is the form. This is Form 105, and this is going to be most commonly completed uh, by the unrepresented injured worker. In certain circumstances, it will be completed by the claims administrator, and we'll describe those in just a moment. But most generally, this is going to be filled out by... Uh, the injured worker. So they'll put in the date of the injury uh, here. They'll, uh, let's see if we can do this here. Let's, let's try something. Can we put in the forms? Okay, so they'll put in the date of injury here. They'll put in the claim number here. They'll put in the specialty that they're requesting here. <clears throat> And they'll check the box here for injured employee. They'll check the box that describes the reason for uh, the QME panel. And then they'll fill in their information here. They'll fill in the employer and claims administrator information here. And if it's known, and if there is a defense attorney on the case, they will fill that in here. This will generally be left blank because the injured worker will not have privy to this type of information. And this information is not required for the submission of this form. Okay, so that's basically it. They fill that form out. They complete the proof of service. They fill in the specialty code that they want, and they send it in. Now, let's review some of the instructions uh, to the injured worker that come with this form. Okay, it says the purpose of the QME evaluator is to obtain a second medical opinion to help resolve disputed medical issues in your worker's compensation claim. If you're an injured worker who is not represented by attorney, use this form to obtain a panel of three QMEs one of which will examine you in the event there is a disagreement over some of the opinions of your treating physician or if there's a need to determine if the claim injury is work-related, and that would be under Labor Code Section 4060. The QME report must discuss all of the disputed and unresolved issues in your claim that need a medical opinion. Now, this is an important quote. Not all of the disputes and not all, all of the unresolved issues actually need a medical opinion. Some, some issues are resolved simply by clarifying facts. Some disputes relate simply to questions of facts and do not require uh, a medical determination. And let me give you an example. Let's say an injured worker comes to his employer uh, on a Monday and says, 
um, you know, uh, Friday, uh, I injured myself while unloading the warehouse. And under some further investigation, the employer determines that indeed uh, the employee was actually not at work on Friday. <laughs> the employee wasn't even at work on Friday. It wasn't a scheduled day to work. That's simply a question of fact. That does not require a medical determination. So not all disputes and not all unresolved issues are medical determinations. But when a medical opinion is required, then uh, the employee is entitled to a medical evaluation uh, through the use of this form. Now, here's an important quote. An injured worker has the first opportunity to choose the type of physician to perform the exam. If you're an injured worker requesting a QME panel, write the specialty you prefer for the QME where indicated. Complete the rest of the form, date it and sign it, and return it to the DWC medical unit. Now it says, if you do not request a panel within 10 days of being asked to do so by the employer, then the employer has the right to request the panel and choose the medical specialty. But the employer may not submit this form until at least 10 days have passed after the form was given to you with the instruction to send the completed form to the medical unit. So an injured worker has the first opportunity to choose the type of physician to perform the exam. It's the injured worker that's going to have the first opportunity to designate the specialty. If the injured worker blows this off and doesn't do this within 10 days, then the employer or the claims administrator has the opportunity to then take control and select the specialty of the physician to perform the evaluation. But the first opportunity is given to the injured worker. And so this is important. However, just because the injured worker has the first opportunity to choose the type of physician to perform the exam does not necessarily mean that the injured worker has the legal right to the panel. Because only when the injured worker is forwarding the dispute does the injured worker have the right to request the panel. The legal right to request the panel rests with the party who has the dispute. Now, in this case, as an example, it may be that the claims administrator is having some sort of a dispute that they want resolved through the QME panel process. They still must give the injured worker the first opportunity to choose the type of physician to perform the exam. And this is going to be important when it comes time to discuss the QME replacement panel. Okay, so uh, even though the injured worker has the first opportunity to choose the physician, not always is that specialty physician uh, going to be accepted by the other party. It's only when the injured worker has the legal right to choose the panel does the specialty panel stick under most circumstances, although there is an exception, and we'll discuss that in just a moment. Okay, so that's that. Uh, after you receive the panel list of the three QMEs, you select a doctor and you make an appointment. And that's, and that's it. Okay, so that's QME form 105. Let's go to QME form 106 for the represented injured worker. Okay, so here's QME panel, QME form 106 for the represented injured worker. In this case, the, uh, let's say the applicant attorney uh, is filling this out. They fill in the date of injury, the claim number. Here's where they request the specialty of the treating physician, of the primary treating physician. Here's where they request uh, the specialty that they would like to have uh, perform the evaluation. And if it's known, they can list here the opposing party's specialty preference If that is known, here they would check the box for uh, applicant attorney. They would check the box for uh, the type of the examination required. 
and then they would simply complete uh, all of the demographic data. Um, if the employee has ever had an AME or a QME exam before, these questions need to be uh, answered. It could be that the uh, evaluator who prior uh, evaluated the case could be called upon to uh, contribute to the current evaluation. Um, and here is where uh, the parties have the opportunity to describe the nature of the dispute uh, for which they are requesting uh, the QME panel. More demographic data regarding the employee's uh, attorney, claims administrator, defense attorney, and then the party submitting this form must attach a copy of the written objection to an opinion of a treating physician, thereby identifying an issue in dispute. So there must always be a copy of some sort of written objection. For example, we object to the permanent impairment rating. We object to the need for future medical care. We object to the permanent and stationary date, etc. Whatever the objection is, that would be uh, have to be attached and reiterated here in this section. This will be filled with a proof of service. Here's the specialty codes to be listed. And let's go through some of this text uh, to clarify some of these issues. To uh, request a panel of three QMEs in a represented case, one of the car parties to the case must first notify the opposing party or parties of either number one, the need for a medical evaluation to resolve a compensability dispute pursuant to Labor Code Section 4060, or that the notifying party is objecting to a medical determination made by the primary treating physician under Labor Code Sections 4061 or 4062. Okay, so they must notify the other party. Once such a notification is made, the parties must wait 10 days plus five additional days if the notification was mailed. Once the waiting period has passed, either party may request a panel on QME Form 106. A copy of the panel request must be served on the other party. So you can see here that it's possible that specialties are different specialty designations uh, are going to start arriving on the desk of the administrative director with the applicant attorney perhaps uh, requesting one type of specialty and the defense attorney requesting perhaps another type of specialty, both of which could be the same and or different than the specialty of the primary treating physician. And uh, we'll show you, I'll show you how that's handled uh, in just a minute. Well, assuming that uh, a panel is issued that both of the parties are comfortable with, uh, each party may strike one name from the panel. The remaining qualified medical evaluator shall serve as the medical evaluator. If a party fails to exercise the right to strike a name from the panel within 10 days of assignment of the panel by the administrative director, the other party may select any physician who remains on the panel to serve as the medical evaluator. And then thereafter, the injured worker has 10 days uh, to schedule the appointment. Okay, finally, the person requesting the panel must attach a written objection indicating the identity of the primary treating physician the date of the primary treating physician's report that is the subject of the objection and a description of the medical dispute determination that requires the comprehensive medical legal report to resolve or attach a request for an examination to determine the compensability under Labor Code Section 4060. So for example, uh, one of the things that would be attached to the form would be an objection 
to a permanent disability determination made by the primary treating physician or an objection to a permanent and stationary date made by the primary treating physician or an objection to the permanent uh, to the need for future medical care made by the primary treating physician or an objection by the claims administrator to a determination of the treating physician thereby requesting an injured worker to request the QME. So those are the QME uh, panel request forms 105 and 106. Now sometimes when these uh, forms are filed and we finally get the QME um, appointment call from either the, from the injured worker or whether they're represented or not, we go through the process of completing the appointment notification form and we submit the appointment notification form only to find out that one or more of the parties is objecting uh, to the specialty uh, of the QME panel. And we are told to either cancel or suspend uh, the appointment until further notice or until the dispute regarding the specialty <laughs> can be resolved. And in those cases, the party objecting to the QME panel must fill out QME form 31.5, the replacement panel request. So let's go over this form now. And this is something that you should become familiar with doctors. Uh, and I'm going to give you some uh, actionable uh, action steps that you can uh, implement uh, in cases of such uh, replacement requests. So here is a party, a party who is uh, requesting a replacement panel under CCR section 31.5. And it's a coincidence that this is referred to as form 31.5. So let's go through this form. Here the original QME panel number is uh, entered, claim number entered, date of injury entered, and then the name and address, or then the first and last name uh, of the injured worker. Now, notice here who's requesting the replacement panel. Who's requesting it? Is it the applicant attorney? Is it the defense attorney? Where does it say the injured worker has the opportunity to request the panel? It doesn't. That's because the injured worker always has the first opportunity to request the panel. So because the injured worker has the opportunity to request the first panel and request the specialty, the injured worker always gets what they want. But it's these parties, these parties that then have an opportunity to object to the panel once it's been issued. So they check the appropriate box. Here they indicate the reason why each QME should be replaced. A list of reasons is included in the instructions to this form. And we'll go over the list of reasons in just a minute. It says to attach documentation to this form to support the request for a new panel or to explain the reason for the or explain the reason for the re request in the space provided below. The failure to adequately document your request may result in your request, request being delayed, returned, or rejected. So adequate documentation to support the request is required. And I've had some doctors tell me that their uh, replacement panel request was denied. And the reason simply offered for the denial uh, was that the administrative director did not feel that the request was adequately supported or that the request was insufficiently uh, supported. So that's a comforting thought uh, is that the request must be adequately supported. And I'll show you what constitutes adequate support here uh, in just a moment. Here's uh, the name of the replacement first doctor on the list, second doctor on the list, third doctor on the list. OK, 
Okay, date of request, uh, name of the requester. This could be the claims administrator or the defense attorney. And here's the proof of service. And then let's go through some of the explanations and reasons as to why uh, a replacement panel uh, could be requested. It says that replacement panel requests are reviewed and approved based on the reasons set forth in section 31.5 of Title VIII of the California Code of Regulations. Now, fortunately, they give us all of the sections of 31.5 right here below. These reasons are listed below for your use. The form attached to these instructions contains pull-down menus that indicate the ap acceptable reason for a new panel. If you are completing this form by hand, please use the section numbers listed below to indicate the reason or reasons why a QME panel or an individual QME should be replaced. Insert the code section in the reason for replacement section as provided in the form. For example, if you believe that a QME should be replaced because the QME cannot see the worker in the allotted time period, Insert 31.5A2 in the reason for replacement below the name of the QME you wish replaced. Attach documentation to support your request. So let's go through these reasons. These are the reasons described in, labor, in CCR section 31.5 that qualify as good cause for a replacement QME panel. And this one here, 31.5 section A1, this is the one that's going to be most commonly uh, encountered. This is going to be the one that we're most commonly confronted with. It says that a QME on the panel does not practice in the specialty requested by the party holding the legal right to request the panel. Now, when would a panel of specialists not practice in the specialty requested by the party holding the legal right to request the panel. <clears throat> Let's think about this. We have an injured worker who's treating with a medical orthopedist and the medical and the injured worker requests a chiropractic evaluating panel. In that case, the panel, the QMEs on the panel, do not practice in the specialty requested by the party holding the legal right to request the panel. Now, who's the party that holds the legal right to request the panel? Well, if it's the injured worker that has the dispute, and it's the injured worker <clears throat> that initiates the QME panel process. The injured worker is the party that holds the legal right to request the panel. If it's the, if it's the claims administrator that has a dispute with the medical determination or a dispute over compensability of the claim, then the claims administrator holds the legal right to request the panel. Now, regardless of the situation, it's always the employee it's always the employee that has the first opportunity to request the specialty. So if the employee requests chiropractic, but they're treating with a medical orthopedist, and the claims administrator requests a medical orthopedic panel, then the, the claims administrator has the right to request a replacement panel under this section. Under this section. Now, on the other hand, if the injured worker requests a chiropractic panel, even though they're treating with a medical orthopedist, if they hold the legal right to request the panel, uh, the new panel request must stick if it's, if it's reasonable. 
and I'll show you an exception to the reasonability uh, or reasonableness of that request here as we go down this list of explanations. Uh, and the next, uh, the next reason, and we'll skip most of these because they would not apply, all of us are able to schedule the appointment within 60 days. Um, if it becomes inconvenient for the uh, injured worker to travel to uh, the location, then that's reason. Uh, conflicts of interest, uh, QME is unavailable. So let's go down to section A9 and section A10. These are the possible reasons where the medical director could opine and could uh, decide for a valid and bona fide uh, panel replacement request. The medical director upon written request finds good cause, good cause, good cause that a replacement QME or an entire replacement panel is appropriate for reasons related to the medical nature of the injury. In other words, uh, due to some documented medical or psychological impairment, uh, the medical director finds that a different QME or a different uh, type of QME is, is more appropriate. So let's just replace the word good cause with documented medical or psychological impairment. The medical director upon written request finds a documented medical or psychological impairment uh, that makes it appropriate for a replacement QME or a replacement of the entire panel. Further, the medical director upon written request filed with a copy of the doctor's first report of occupational injury or illness and the most recent PR2 or narrative report determines after review of all appropriate records that the specialty chosen by the party holding the legal right to designate a specialty is medically or otherwise inappropriate for the disputed medical issues. The medical director may request either party to provide additional information or records necessary for the determination. Now, this is a, a section that applies to those cases where one of the parties objects to the specialty of the evaluating physician by stating that the evaluating physician is of a different specialty than the primary treating physician. And this happens to chiropractors all the time. You'll have an injured worker who's treating with a medical orthopedist and the injured worker uh, requests a chiropractic QME panel. And one or more of the parties objects to that panel by stating that uh, because the primary treating physician is in orthopedics, the evaluating physician must be in orthopedics. But this section here, uh, makes it appropriate <clears throat> to for a chiropractor to evaluate orthopedic injury cases that are within the scope of chiropractic treatment and also within the expertise of impairment evaluation of a competent uh, qualified medical evaluator unless the other party can demonstrate that uh, the medical specialty of chiropractic is inappropriate for the disputed medical issue. And that's quite difficult uh, to do.